Factor label conversions are a way in which we can take a value of a measurement and present it in different units of measurement under a different system, but still retain the same meaning of the measurement, the same value. And as an example of really what the whole process comes down to is quite simple. It's the identity principle of multiplication. If you take the number five and multiply by one, of course you get five. And that's because if you take any value and multiply it by one, the value remains unchanged. A little more less obvious, shall we say? is if I used a larger number, a larger value, a different value, and multiply by one, I'd get the same value. No confusion there. Neither should there be any confusion if I take a smiley face and I multiply a smiley face times one. A smiley face isn't a number, but it has value, and I should get the same value. Smiley face. And of course, the way in which we represent one can be different as well. For instance, I could take a number and I could multiply it by, say, 25 over 25. Now, mathematics tells me that anytime you take a number and divide it by itself, the outcome is that you have one. So anytime I write a ratio wherein the numerator is equal to its denominator, it really means the same thing as one. And therefore, if I multiply a value by one, I get an unchanged value. Now, how does that apply to conversions? Well, if we think in the British, the archaic British measurement system of length, Americans would recognize the fact that one foot is equal to 12 inches. It's an equality. Therefore, if I were to write it as a ratio, one foot over 12 inches, the value of this ratio is the same as one. Anything multiplied by this ratio would not have its value changed because one foot equals 12 inches, just as 25 equals 25. And 25 twenty fifths is one, one foot 12 inches in ratio is one. So if I were to take a measurement like six inches and I were to multiply it by this ratio, the value of a six inch length is unchanged. That doesn't mean the numbers and the units don't change because we all know that six divided by 12 is no longer six, it's 0.5. We also know that if you take inches and divide by inches, the inches cancel. So not only has the number changed when I perform this operation, the units change. I'm now talking about feet instead of inches. But the value has not changed. Six inches is a half a foot. So I have successfully converted from one system to another without changing the value. So as examples of how this can be applied, a more scientifically valid example would be to use the metric system in conversion. Say for instance I had 2.95 times 10 to the 23rd nanometers, nano being a billionth of a meter. Looks like a large number. But let's say I want to convert that to meters, which I can appreciate better. I can picture a meter in my mind. It's roughly a yard in the British system. So if I want to make this conversion, I need to multiply this by a value that's equal to 1, and therefore I won't change the value. And the way in which I should do that is to set up a relationship between two units for which I know an equality. How many nanometers equal how many of some other units? And if I were to write that ratio, I would be multiplying this measurement by one and not changing its value. Always write units in first. 
If I want to convert from nanometers to meters, I'll write nanometers and meters in such a way that I can clearly see the nanometers will cancel from numerator and denominator when I multiply. Once I've established the units I want, I put in values that would make this an equality. I recommend that you always put a 1 in front of the prefixed unit that you're using in the metric system. Because the meaning of nano is a billionth, a 10 to the negative ninth of something. And if I put the 1 in front of the prefix, all I do is put the value of the prefix in front of the actual unit. And what this is telling me is one billionth of a meter equals one billionth of a meter. Good thing. It's always nice when blue equals blue, when 10 equals 10, when a billionth of something equals a billionth of something. And so I'm multiplying by one. The value won't change. The units do change. And I no longer have nanometers as units. I have successfully converted to units of meters, which are the units I was trying to convert to. And the number would end up being 2.95 times 10 to the 14th meters. Now something to always check with any problem in chemistry or physics is A, that you have the correct units, or the number is meaningless, and B, you should always check for how many significant figures are presented in your answer. Well, when you multiply or divide numbers, your answer should be presented with the same number of significant figures as whichever value had the fewest significant figures. Well, this is a measured number that has three significant digits. This is a definition that exists between meters and nanometers. The definition of a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. And definitions are exact numbers, meaning they have infinite numbers of zeros you could add to them. I could write this as 1.000000 nanometers equal to this value here. There is no limited number of significant figures in a exact number. So I look to my measured number for how many significant figures to have. One, two, three. One, two, three. I have the correct number. I have the correct units. I've made the conversion. For something a little more involved, let's say I wanted to convert 3.0 kilometers to units of micrometers. Now, these are both metric prefixed units. And yes, if you're good with powers of 10, you might know that one of these units, a kilometer, equals 10 to the ninth of these units, micrometers. But if you're shaky on the relationships, I recommend doing intrametric conversions in two steps. In the first step, you should convert the prefixed unit that you have to the base unit. And the base unit of length we're dealing with here is meters. And then once you've made that conversion, you should convert the base unit back to the other prefixed unit. And this is probably the best thing to do, is go ahead and write in all of the units that you need to successfully make the conversion and you can visualize that everything's going to cancel except for the units you want. Then worry about values to put in. Always put a 1 in front of the prefixed unit because the meaning of the word kilo is 1,000. So if I write 1,000 in front of the unit, I'm saying something that's true. 1,000 meters equals 1,000 meters. So I am multiplying effectively by one and not changing my value. Kilometers do cancel. And I always recommend that you cancel units as you go. Because if I stopped right now, I would see what units I have as my units. 
But to fill in the other values here, put the one in front of the prefixed unit. This prefix, micro, means 10 to the negative sixth of something. So yes, one millionth of a meter is equal to one millionth of a meter. So this is effectively a value of one. And I'm simply multiplying my measured value by one two times, which should give me the same value. Not number, but value. And then I would grab my calculator, make the necessary calculations, and we would get 3.0 times 10 to the ninth on our calculator. But I want to check two things always. No measured quantity in science has meaning without units. The whole point of this was to achieve units of micrometers. This is the only measured number in the sequence of numbers. These are definitions. They're exact. And my measured number has three significant digits. So I, or excuse me, two. I would want two significant digits in my final answer. So as written, I can state that 3.0 kilometers measured is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the ninth micrometers. And I've successfully converted. One final example. What if we did have an old textbook that had a measurement in, say, miles, which are British units, completely different than the metric units? And let's say I wanted to know what this was in some metric unit, perhaps nanometers, billionths of a meter. Well, think of my task as being similar to this. Think of being on one side of a very deep gorge, and you want to get over to the other side of the gorge. This is the British system side of the gorge. This is the metric system side of the gorge. Hopefully, there's a bridge across the gorge. Now, I have two choices. I can either take a flying leap and hope I land on the other side of the gorge. If I don't, I'll fall to my death and be a greasy spot on the bottom of the canyon floor. Or I can walk my way down to the bridge, cross the bridge, and then get to where I'm trying to go. Essentially, we have to do that in this problem because miles are British units and nanometers are metric units. And we have to have some equality between the two if we're going to create a conversion factor out of it. A recommended length conversion, because it's exact, is between British inches and metric centimeters. It's good to know that one inch British is equal to 2.54 centimeters metric. That would be my bridge between inches and centimeters, British and metric. And since I'm not in inches currently, I'm in miles, I gotta do a little walking first. I gotta get to the inch bridge. Then I can use the equality as a conversion to get to the other side. But since centimeters are not the units I want on the metric side, I'd have to do a little more walking on that side. So yes, this involves more steps than one simple conversion. So I get to work. I think British to metric. What length do I know? This is the length that I know. One inch British, 2.54 centimeters metric. So the first thing I have to do is successfully convert miles to inches. Well, to do that in one step, I would need to know how many miles equal a certain number of inches. And frankly, as I like to tell my students, if you know how many inches equal a mile, you should come and see me after class. And I'll take you down to Walmart on the weekend and get you a life. Because most people don't know how many miles are equal to one inch. But if you're an American, you should know a mile-feet relationship that's true. So I can do it in steps. First, I can convert miles to feet. I'm getting closer to my bridge. And yes, one mile equals 5,280 feet. 
miles would cancel. Always cancel as you go along. Of course, now that I have feet as units, I should know that one foot equals 12 inches. And as an equality, I can create a relationship equal to one. I would write the feet down here to get cancellation, the inches up there, and one foot equals 12 inches. I'm at my bridge. And the whole reason for getting to that bridge was to successfully span the British metric gorge. I would write inches in the denominator to get cancellation, centimeters in the numerator, and use the numeric relationship. One inch British is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters metric. Cancels beautifully. Of course, I now want to get to nanometers in the metric system. This unit has a prefix, this unit has a prefix, so I recommend it in two steps. Centimeters to meters, followed by meters to nanometers. And fill in the values that make it true. Put a one in front of the prefixed unit. Centi means 10 to the negative two a one hundredth. And yes, a one hundredth of a meter equals one hundredth of a meter. Centimeters cancel. Finally, I put a one in front of the prefixed unit because this prefix is nano and nano means ten to the negative nine. So I put in ten to the negative nine. And literally in my mind this tells me one billionth of a meter equals one billionth of a meter. That's one, that's one, 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 one. The value of all these ratios is one. So the value of my four miles will not change. I grab my calculator and I press the right buttons and my calculator gives me 6.43, oh gosh, 7376 times 10 to the 12th. And in this case, there are still two things I have to clear up. Most obvious, every answer in science should have units, and my units should be nanometers. Less obvious, if you haven't paid attention to your digits, is how many digits, since I'm multiplying and dividing, should be in my answer. And it should be the same number of digits as whichever measured number has the fewest digits in the calculation. My initial measurement is a measured number. However, this is a conversion within the British system. The definition of a mile is that many feet. Exactly that many feet equal exactly one mile. I could write as many zeros after the decimal in these two values as I wanted to. They're exact numbers. They don't affect the significant figures. Again, an exact number. This particular conversion between systems is also exact, as are the conversions within the metric system. So there's only one measured number, that's my measurement, with two digits. So I would round my answer off to two digits, 6.4. The 3 would round this down to a 4 times 10 to the 12 nanometers. And I've whew, successfully converted a measurement in British miles to a measurement in metric nanometers.